This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. Of provision. That is the title of this message this morning Miracle of Provision. God is our provider. God is our provider. And when you have the revelation of God being your provider, it helps you to decide your expectation. It helps you to decide how you look at your finances and how you look at your situation. God is my provider. God wants us to function in the revelation of supernatural provision that he can provide for us. He can provide for our vision. He can provide for our purpose. He can provide for our assignment. God is my provider. Psalm 23, verse 1, the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The revelation of God being your source helps you to control your future. It also helps you to control your emotion when you have challenges or situations of life. I need to see God as my source. I need to see God as my provider. I need revelation in these two aspects of life. God is my source and God is my provider. Our job is one of the channels. Our business is our channels. Receiving supernatural help from people is also the channel, it's another channel. But God is my source. That is what God wants you to say, that he is your source, that no matter what you may be going through in the natural or in your business, in your job, or in your career, God is your source. This revelation that God is your source equips you to unlock the will of God. This revelation that God is your source, you know, in the book of First Peter, I think five verse seven, he said, "Casting your cares upon Him." The care, whatever care you may be having, you may be dealing with issues. He said, "You cast your cares upon the Lord." And one of the ways your faith works effectively is when you put your cares on Jesus. I said, "One of the ways your faith works effectively." Is when you put your cares on Jesus that no matter what you may be dealing with, no matter what you may be going through, you, you, I, I, I trust God. I trust in Jesus. I trust in his finished work. I trust in the knowledge of his will. If he is your provider, you will have no fear concerning the future. You will not have no fear concerning the life. God wants you to trust him. God wants us to trust him concerning all aspects of our lives. What it has to do with our children, our health, our finances, our career, he wants us to trust him. The act of trusting God is one of the keys to unlocking supernatural inquiries. I want to say that again. I said the art of trusting God is one of the keys to supernatural increase. That, that's what the act. You know, when you trust God, it leads to supernatural increase. It also leads to supernatural intervention. One of the ways we unlock supernatural intervention is when we trust God. One of the ways we unlock supernatural intervention is when we trust God and we trust God through the knowledge of his will. One of the ways you can trust God successfully is when you know what he can do and what he's willing to do. I need to know what he can do. 
I need to know what he's willing to do. I need to get to a point where I trust him for everything. What it has to do with my life, it has to do with my job, it has to do with my career, it has to do with my purpose. I need to trust God in all aspects of my life. He is able to make all grace abound towards me, but I'm always having. God wants me to trust him concerning my job, concerning my business, concerning my career, concerning my health. He wants me to trust him. So miracles of supernatural provision begin when you choose to trust God above the situation. When you choose to trust God, and, and the, the psalmist said, David said, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord. He got to a point in his life that he saw God as his source, as the one who's going to help him. And if it's your shepherd, that means it's your provider. That means he's the one that gives you direction. He's the one that helps you to see possibility in the midst of adversity. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want for preferential treatment. I shall not want for the supernatural help. I shall not want for supernatural possibility. The Lord is my shepherd. And God is expecting me to trust him no matter what my situation may be in the natural. He wants me to trust him. He wants me to trust him. But let's look at uh, Second Kings chapter 4. In Second Kings chapter 4, I like to read from verse 1. He said, a, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried unto Elisha, saying, your, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be, to be his slaves. Verse 2 said, so Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Elisha said, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your hand sub, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Her situation was a very challenging situation. But she knew where to go. She got to enlighten the man of God and explain the situation. It is by faith we will receive solution after we place our request. It is by faith we will receive solution after we have placed our request. Whatever your request may be in any aspect of life, when, when you say, God, I want to trust you with my life. I want to trust you with my future. I want to trust you with my destiny. After the request, you need to get to a point where you have to release your faith to receive what you're looking for. And here we saw that she came to Elisha, told Elisha our situation. Elisha asked her, what do you want me to do? And what do you have in your house? There is always something around you where the miracle can start from. There is something that you, you have that sometimes you may be passive towards it. You, you wouldn't have seen it as something that has a huge value, but when you trust God, when you trust God, when you trust God, when you believe His word, He's able to help you. He's able to help you make progress in any aspect of your life. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, Second Kings chapter 4, verse 2. What do you have in the house? And she said, Your Mid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Verse 3 said, Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere. Go borrow vessels from everywhere. One of the keys to the miraculous is to respond to a prophetic command that the Lord has given. One of the keys to miracles of provision is to respond to the prophetic command that the Lord has given, God will give you a prophetic instruction with an expectation that you will respond in obedience. God will tell you what to do. You know, sometimes in the natural, people focus more on their situation than on what God is telling them. 
The enemy wants you to believe that your situation is so difficult, your situation is so tough, and one of the things the enemy keeps doing is to magnify the experience in your mind from beyond you and begin to tell you this experience is great, you, you, you can't be able to overcome this experience, you're not able, it's bigger than you. No. Whenever the enemy mother finds anything around you, exalt the word of God above the situation. With God's word, there is deliverance. With God's word, there is healing. With God's word, there is hope. With God's word, there is victory. With God's word, there is dominion. So here, Elisha said to our goal, both vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, do not gather just few. That was the instruction. Go and collect vessels from people, but don't get few. Make sure you have many vessels. God will give you an instruction and expect you to act on the instruction for him to unlock the impossible for you. God will give you an instruction and expect you to trust the instruction. He will give you an instruction. God will give you an instruction and expect you to trust the instruction. He gives you the instruction and he expects you to trust my instruction. Trust what I'm telling you. I'm giving you a word concerning your future. I'm giving you a word concerning your destiny. I'm giving you a word concerning your business. Trust me with your future. Trust me. Whenever God gives you a prophetic word, he's creating an atmosphere where you can unlock the supernatural help. When he, when he gives you a prophetic word, when he tells you to do something, when he instructs you to do something, he's trying to bring you into a place of uncommon results. A prophetic word equips us to unlock the impossible. Well, the primary purpose of a prophetic word is for we to unlock the impossible, is for us to excel in the things of the Spirit. So God gives us a prophetic word to enable us to rise far beyond the situation. A prophetic word from God is also the direction that God is giving to you and how God wants you to look at your situation. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what your situation may be in the natural, there is always a word from God that will set the stage for supernatural intervention and for the manifestation of the miraculous. Whenever God wants to change a man's life, he gives him a word. And sometimes most people may just become passive towards it. Oh, I, I don't believe that that's what God wants me to do. But have you asked him to know what he wants you to do? Have you asked him to know what he wants you to do? Whenever God wants to change your situation, he gives you an instruction. The purpose of the instruction is for you to rise beyond the situation as you can produce the God kind of experience. The word of God contains the knowledge of his will. The word of God carries a supernatural atmosphere that can change any experience that is not consistent with God's intention. And the scripture here, Elisha said to him, go and borrow vessels. Go and borrow vessels. Borrow not few. God will change your situation by telling you what to do. But you will reap the harvest by doing what God asks you to do. Whenever God wants to change your situation, he tells you what to do. You will enforce that situation and reap the harvest of the instruction. So here was so, he said, go borrow vessels and burn off you. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you. And you and your sons then will pour it into all the vessels set beside you the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessel to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And, and he said to her, 
there is not another vessel, so the oil sinks. Now, this is another issue here. Sometimes God gives us instruction, and we do part of the instruction, not the totality of the instruction. The instruction was for she to borrow many vessels, for she to borrow many vessels, but she borrowed few, and right now she wants more vessels because the miraculous have started. She, the son said there is no more vessels. Can I say this to you? Pastoral obedience will not change your situation. What will change your situation is a complete obedience. Please write this down. Pastoral obedience will not change your situation. What will change your situation is a complete obedience. God wants you to yield to him, to respond to him, to act on his word, to respond to his will, to do things in the direction of his will. And here we saw, we saw that she didn't do, she didn't follow the entire instruction because God didn't just want her to pay her debts but God wants her to live in provision because God has given her the divine opportunity to change her situation. No matter what you're dealing with in this season, one of the key things I want you to do is to respond to the word of God. What is God telling you to do? What is the spirit of God asking you to do? There is a word from God. He wants you to follow his instruction. He wants you to follow his counsel. There is something God is asking you to do in this season. Obedience is the heart of our faith work. Obedience is the heart of our faith work. Whenever God wants to change your situation, he gives you an instruction. But finally, listen to this. One of the ways we see miracles of supernatural provision is to respond to the leading of the Spirit. Responding to the leading of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost will tell you to do something that may not be convenient for you, but it's going to lead to the miraculous. Responding to the leading of the Spirit, Romans 8, 14, he said, as we that are led by the Spirit of God, he said they are the sons of God. Supernatural provision is connected to being led by the Spirit of God. To be led by the Spirit, for me to successfully receive the leadership of the Spirit of God, I have to consistently renew my mind as I can move in the direction of the will of God. I have to renew my mind. I have to renew my mind for me to be able to move in the direction of the will of God. I have to renew my mind. Romans 12, verse 2. In Romans 12, verse 2, it said, don't be conformed to this world, but be a transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you can renew your mind, you will increase the degree of your sensitivity towards the Holy Spirit. If you can renew your mind, you will increase the degree of your sensitivity towards the Holy Spirit. If you can renew your mind, you can, you can receive more from the Holy Spirit. You can receive more from the will of God. You can receive more from the purpose of God. Renewing your mind in Philippians 2 verse 5. Philippians 2 verse 5, it says, let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you. They raise the mind of Christ that unlocks supernatural health. What are you dealing with? Begin to renew your mind with God's word. Write down your expectation. Write down what you're trusting God for. Don't be passive towards it. Don't say it in my heart. Write it down. Get scriptures that has to do with what you're believing God for. Be precise in your expectation. What are you trusting God for? What do you want to see? What do you want to see being made manifest? Faith in God can change any situation when that faith is acting on the instructions of the Spirit. Faith in God can change any situation when that faith is acting 
on the instructions of the Holy Ghost. There is an instruction from the Spirit of God. There is something the Spirit of God is saying concerning your life, concerning your dream, concerning your vision, concerning your assignment. There is something the Holy Ghost is saying concerning your life. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, whatever you may be facing right now, the Spirit of God wants to show you what to do, how to do it, what to do, how to do it. He wants to show you. By the Spirit, we connect with the will of God. By the Spirit, we follow the will of God. It is by the Spirit. We connect with the will of God. It is by the Spirit. We follow the will of God. It is by the Spirit. It is by the Spirit. There is supernatural provision for you. The next point is declare that you have miracles of provision. Confection leads to possession. One of the ways you're going to have possession is by your confection. Confection leads to possession. If you don't say it, you won't see it. Mark 11, we read from verse 20 to 22. Part of what Jesus said, they say, have faith in God. He went forward to say, if you can say to this mountain. Most times, people are complaining about their situation, but they're not speaking the word of God about the situation. Every situation will respond to the command of God's word. Whatever you're believing God for, when you begin to say it, you are bringing in an atmosphere of supernatural possibilities. You start declaring it. I have manifestation. I have supernatural manifestation concerning the things I'm trusting God for. I have manifestation. I have manifestation. I'm trusting God. I have manifestation. I have manifestation. I'm trusting God. I have manifestation. You need to begin to see what he's saying for you to walk in the miracles. You need to begin to see them. You need to begin to see them, what he's saying. And you start saying it. In Luke Gospel to the 5, you read from verse 1 to 12, you read the account of Simon. He had a challenging business. Things weren't working well. And Jesus showed up and said, can I have your boat? That's partnership there. And when Jesus was he brought forth his experience and said, we've toiled all night. We've been toiling. The reason for the toiling was the absence of the God factor. The reason for the toiling is the absence of the God factor. Then Jesus said, launch into the deep. And he said, at your word, I let down the net. There was a huge harvest that is connected to divine instruction. And he responded to the instruction. And the miraculous break out. Wow. He responded to the instruction. And the miraculous break out. Amazing things started happening. Great things started happening from being broke to being full, to being rich, to being blessed, because he followed an instruction, because he engaged the instruction. Your situation is not so bad that God cannot redeem the situation. There is nothing you're going through that the Holy Ghost does not have solution for you. One of the ways we unlock supernatural solution is to tell ourselves the Spirit has solution for me. The Holy Ghost has solution for me. I have solution. I have solution from the Spirit. By the Spirit, I have solution. I have solution in the name of Jesus. The Spirit is giving me divine solution. I'm responding to divine solution. I'm responding to divine solution. By the Spirit, I receive divine solution. By the Spirit, you start seeing that it's possible. Your dreams are possible. Your visions are possible. Your assignment is possible. By the Spirit, you start noticing that it is possible. With God, all things are possible. Look beyond your situation. Look beyond your pain. Look beyond what you're going through. And begin 
to trust God and begin to rely on his word. Don't let your past experience distract you from believing in what God has spoken to you. Don't allow how you feel and the things that happened 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago, one year ago. Don't let offense come in. Don't let the enemy use offense as a weapon to make a shipwreck of your faith. No. Keep your love work. Keep your love work. When you walk in love, you walk in the will of God. When you walk in love, you protect your finances. When you walk in love, you protect your health. A lot of God's people don't know that love work is strategic in protecting your inheritance in Christ Jesus. Your love work is strategic. He said, the new commandments I give to you, if it's new, that means it's important. The new commandments I give to you that you love one another. He didn't tell you love them because they did right. He didn't tell you love them because they, they, they love you. No. He said, love one another. There are people that it's difficult to love. And that is where our love work has to be seen. Faith work it by love. If you want to see supernatural miracle, miracles of provision, faith work it by love. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, faith work it by love. And this is what the Holy Ghost will have me say to you. Faith work it by love. Expect miracles. Expect signs and wonder. Expect supernatural increase. Expect on common open door. Miracles of provision. There is a provision with your name on it. In John Gospel chapter 6. Five loaves of bread and two small fish look like nothing. But when faith is released in the spirit of thanksgiving, the principle of multiplication will be enforced that is going to break the limitation. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through, no matter what the situation is, the most important thing is to find out what God's word has said and you make that your reality. Let the word of God be your reality. And five loaves and two small fish. And Jesus took the loaf and gave thanks. You see, one of the ways you practice supernatural faith is to cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving. One of the ways you cultivate supernatural faith is to practice the lifestyle of thanksgiving, the lifestyle where you can thank God. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to give you praise. No matter how I feel, no matter what I'm going through, Lord, I want to give you praise. I want to give you praise out of those that proceed thanksgiving, he will multiply. The miracles of provision happen in the atmosphere of the spirit of gratitude, being thankful. Instead of nagging, complaining, you start thanking God. You start giving God praise. You start trusting God. You know, there was a day I needed to, a little son came to me and said he wanted to buy something, you know. So I, I said, okay, let's believe God for it, that God was going to provide for it. You know, I told him, let's believe God for it, that God is going to provide for it. And few minutes, why was he talking to me? Someone knocked at our gate. And I asked him to go check the gate. The exact thing this my little son asked me to buy for him, someone came with it. Wow. Man, I will not forget that miracle. Someone came with it. And he told me someone was looking for me. I said, okay. I went to see the young man. Exactly what my little son was asking me to buy for him was what the young man came to give me as a gift. Can I say this to you? Miracles are real. Miracles are for today. God is a provider. Begin to go in the revelation of God being your provider. Begin to grow in the revelation of God being your source. God is able to meet your need, to help you out, 
with whatever you're dealing with in this season. Whatever the situation may be with you in this season, Jesus is the provider. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the miracle worker. Jesus can change your story. You can believe God and see miracles, signs, and wonders. It's not over yet. Don't give up. The provision to pay off that mortgage is coming. The provision to pay off the car note is coming. Don't give up. Through faith is full of hope. And that hope emanates from the knowledge of God's word. No matter what you're dealing with, Jesus is the solution. Father, we thank you for this service this morning. Thank you for everyone connected to this service. I pray for supernatural provision for you concerning your vision, concerning your health, concerning your finances. I pray for supernatural provision provision for you that God will meet your need in the name of Jesus. Whatever your needs are, I stand between faith and will receive the supply. We'll receive the provision in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory be to God. We're going to take our offerings right now before we take the announcement. Whatever you're giving this morning, let's just pray over it. Son, in the name of Jesus, we prove our offering this morning as we we'll sow our seed, as we we'll give our tithes. I pray that God will increase us in every area of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Son, are you there? I am. Good morning. So we'll be back on Wednesday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for prayer and also Thursday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bible study. If you haven't purchased Apostles books, he has three on Amazon, uh, 40 things you need to know about your future. There's greatness in you and how to run an online business from any location. So you can go to amazon.com and purchase those books. Uh, also, we have a YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube with over 3,000 videos on there to help you with your walk with the Lord. So we will see you on Wednesday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Everyone have a great week and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers all over the world. Have a great day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Happy Mother's Day to every mother here. I think we'll have so many mothers being here, yeah. But I want to celebrate every mother that is on this broadcast this morning and those watching by YouTube, that Facebook will love you. And may you continue to flourish. May you continue to prosper. May you continue to excel. May you continue to win in life. May your labor of love never go in vain. May you continue to win in all aspects of your lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. See you on Wednesday and have a great day. God bless.